All right. Welcome to the Music Makers Cookbook, the podcast that helps independent artists cook up recipes for success in the music industry. I'm Sean, uh, your host today, and unfortunately, as Brandon would put it, my normal co-host, this is going to be a solo dolo episode, one that's just me. Both of our schedules are getting pretty crazy right now, but it's just a temporary thing. Uh, he will be joining me back on the next episode, where we'll be further diving into the previous episode's topic, which is getting confident in self-promotion. But uh, since he couldn't be here today and we need to get a podcast episode out, it's going to be just me for today. So I figured we're going to have more of a laid back one that's really just kind of brainstorming and talking about ideas, specifically ideas on collaborating with other artists in the industry. Music is one of those things where it's very social and very intimate uh, in terms of what people write and sing and listen to. It's about a shared experience. I'm a huge believer that part of the hero's journey really concludes when it is shared amongst other people. That is the final step. It's not just going out there and making the music. You need to come back with the music and show it to the people. Another name for it is your fan base who will appreciate and learn and grow from listening to your music. It's really, really important. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Some creative and interesting fun ways to collaborate with other musicians so that you guys can both grow together. You know, a rising tide raises all ships, that whole thing. But before we dive into that, I've been doing a, a question at the beginning of the episode and every single episode, and today's not going to be much different. Now, unfortunately, Brand's not here to uh, answer the question off the cuff like he always does. Um, but the one today is, if your band had a signature pizza, what toppings would be on it? Now, for me... I know it's incredibly controversial because I've had verbal altercations with other people based on my opinions, but I am a huge believer that pineapple does in fact belong on pizza. I know, I know, it's very controversial, but pineapple, yellow peppers, and pepperoni, just the spice with the savory, with the dairy and the cheese, and then just that sweetness of the pineapple, it all just comes together so much for me. So that would be my personal pizza. Um... I guess I'd call it like the recording special or something. I have no idea. What pizza would you have? What toppings would you put on? If you're in a band with multiple people, you know, maybe have some fun. Ask. Don't even tell people that you're putting a pizza together. Ask all the members of your band what's one topping that they put on pizza and then see what abomination it creates if you've got four, five, six or more of you guys to see what comes out. With that being said, enough of an introduction. Let's kind of dive into some ideas that you can collaborate with other artists to just have fun, grow, market, and promote yourself. The first one I want to talk about is just song features. Everyone knows what a song feature is. You get another artist, you have them appear in your song, whether it be a verse, doubling up in the chorus, giving them a bridge, something like that. And then when you post the song on your page, you feature them and you get the royalty split. And because they're tagged on it, they go in front of their fan base as well as your fan base. But let's kind of put a twist on it. I mean, we can talk about ideas that people have done all the time, but let's get a little more creative with it and do something more special for all of these 10 things I'm going to talk about and really make it interesting. So a twist you can do on it is instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to feature this one artist on my track, what if you do a feature on their track too? Kind of start off with a small softball, nothing completely crazy here, but if you release a song that they're on and they release a song that you're on that really breeds cross-contamination amongst your fan base. And if you have a shared fan base, that is a surefire way for both of you guys to gain new fans because no matter what, you're almost guaranteed to have one of you get exposure in front of the other person's audience because both of you guys are releasing a song at the same time and then you can promote it together. And if they're similar with the story or it's a continuation of the story or whatnot, boom, it's a bunch of marketing material. You can have a bunch of fun with it, make shorts, make videos, promotional photos, materials, all that kind of stuff. Next up, another classic thing that people do all the time is tour with a special group. You and another band go on tour, just going out on the road together. That's kind of the classic way to do it, but let's twist it up again. <laughs> what would be interesting to kind of bleed the fan base this year? Because that's the whole goal of this, to get people who aren't aware of you to become exposed to you through the other artists that you're working with. So a fun way to do that is if you both do a cover of the other band's or the other artist's song in your set. That's just a really simple way to just play something that the other people are familiar with because they already know their other artist's song if they're a fan of the other artist. And it can be really interesting and fun 
if you and another artist are covering each other's music because now you're getting different perspectives and different ideas and different twists on the music that you're creating that might help spur you creatively moving forward as well. You know, what's the saying? Great artists steal. So if they're doing a cover of your song, they do something that you really like, you can take that and put it on your song moving forward too. So there's a lot of positivity to it. So the third collaboration thing is near and dear to my heart and something that we talk about quite often and that is going on podcasts, going on shows, uh, talking to about your music and that's kind of a collaboration with more of the promotional side of it, talking with promoters, music bloggers, that side. Well, you can also do that and prom- make these podcast episodes with other artists. There's no reason why you can't front a podcast yourself and kind of have a unique spin on it. I have a, an old buddy. I um, haven't talked to him in a while. I, I really need to. Brian, if you're hearing this, uh, we got we to gotta get launched sometime. But he has a podcast called invite the neighbors DIY podcast. And the whole thing is he talks to other musicians in his scene and interviews them about what about their music is about, what products they have coming up, tours they got coming up, their music process. And it's just very casual artist to artist talking about music. And it started off in the local scene, but as it grew, he started getting contacted by labels who want their musicians to go on his podcast and he can reach out to other scenes. Now, because it's his podcast, he can put his songs in the intro card, during the breaks, the transitions, the end card. He can plug his own music. So if someone's checking out his podcast because they want to listen to the interview of their favorite artist, well, now they're introduced to his music as well. And also now there's a connection between him and the other artist where it's like, hey, you scratch, I scratch my back, you scratch yours, promote my podcast and your channel, which in turn promotes my music and build relationships in the industry. It was a really cool thing that he was doing. I don't know if he still is. I think the last post I saw, he had one in 2023. It's a really cool idea. You can meet some awesome people by interviewing other artists. I think it's a really fun and creative way to kind of collaborate with other musicians. Number four of the 10 ways to collaborate with other artists is live streaming songwriting sessions. If you want to do a collaboration with an artist where they feature on each other's songs, why not live stream it? Traditionally, this is just behind closed doors being created, but with technology, you can put your phone up and just kind of live stream it, get people to tune in, give feedback on where you're going with your music, give you suggestions for topics, um, and just have a collaborative feature aspect to it where your fans can dive further into it and their fans can become aware of it. Especially if you have like a Patreon or something where people pay to see extra content, that's a great idea for something to be behind that paid tier to access that aspect of your music. If they have a Patreon as well, they should be promoting it on their end as well so that both your fans can be engaging with each other building in kind of a combined community, get some people to one side, people to the other side. I mean, that's the purpose of all this stuff. So live streaming your songwriting sessions, that could be a fun idea to experiment with. Number five is playlist collaboration, kind of with a theme. Now, I'm not saying just share a playlist or create a shared playlist, maybe make something like a concept behind it, like late night drives or songs I fall asleep to or songs that remind me of her or be ambiguous or whatever your theming is for your music, your brand, kind of play around with it, combine the two. You can also make it kind of interesting where you both create playlists and in your playlist, the first letter of every song spells out the name of their band. Or you can create playlists once a week, once every other week that have like hidden messages that you send to each other that the fans can then look into and kind of be a part of this conversation you're having through these playlists. Uh, ARGs, things like that, uh, online mysteries that people can interact with are really cool and really popular right now. So if there's a way you can do that with your playlists, it could be really fun and creative and a good way of building, you know, that kind of relationship with another artist. Number six. Number six. Over halfway there. This one takes a little bit more effort up front, but you know, creating behind the scenes vlogs of your band and what you're doing and whatnot. Uh, Traditionally, it's just kind of showing behind the scenes shots of the studio before and after shows, load in, load out, fan interactions, things like that. Recording it, editing it down and kind of posting it out there in somewhat of a vlog. No reason you can't do that with a fellow artist. If they're creating vlogs as well, collaborate on it. Maybe if you're sharing a show together, you make a short vlog that is a POV of an artist talking about their experience and they make a short vlog POV from their perspective talking about 
your show and you as an artist and you post individual channels and send links and crosstalk that builds SEO because now your links are going to each other, talks about the whole story. So if somebody wants to learn about the whole experience of you guys in the studio together or your tour together or whatever it is, they have to go to both channels. It's just very synergistic and it takes some work up in the front, but it can be really fun and rewarding to do. So I recommend looking into that. Number seven, music video crossovers. Now this one's really common. It kind of goes hand in hand with the whole featured thing. If they're on your track, you want them in your video so that way their fans can see them like, ah, oh, this is my favorite artist. I want to watch that. <laughs> Man, no one really fucking talks like that. But the idea is there. Like they're going to be more interested in watching your video if their favorite artist makes an appearance on it. Instead of just having them appear in your video, why not building up to it? Like, you know this collaboration is going to happen. Building up to it, you can hide Easter eggs or like small things inside your video that relate to the other artist and challenge your fans to find them. It's like, hey, there's 10 references to this artist throughout this uh, short video. Can you find all of them? And build discourse, have a conversation. You know, use social media to be social. Um, that's a fun way to collaborate with these artists. That's not necessarily straight on. Oh, there they are. Look at that. Uh, you can drop hints like, hey, um, like the, the title name of whatever single you guys are going to be releasing together in the background or the location of the first leg of the tour or some things like that. You can kind of hide them in the background and just kind of let your fans it, participate in it and build some hype. Number eight is joint merch releases. Now, the most easy thing is just partnering with another artist for your merch release. Like, oh yeah, we'll just have both of our things on the same shirt. Or more easily, what more commonly happens is that they'll release bundles at the shows of, hey, for $50, you get our $30 shirt and their $30 shirt. So you save $10 and you get both shirts. That can be fun, especially if somebody is not already into both of you, but it's not really gonna incentivize people to buy both pieces if they're not familiar with the other band. So there's some fun ways you can do to kind of combine them to make one piece of merch from separate pieces. So like, let's say you sell patches and they sell hats or whatnot. You can take some time, pre put patches on a hat and have a shared patch hat. Or, or you can make things that are specifically both of your bands, specific for the tour, and then just make a limited time shirt that's only sold at the show. That can be a little riskier, especially when you're just starting off if you don't have that strong fan base that is interested in buying your merch. It also takes a lot of promotion upfront to get people invested in the tour. So you wanna to wanna to plan to make it an actual event that has its own kind of theming around it, get some graphic designers involved so it looks really cool and take that next step if you're going to com make combined merch, but it can be a really cool, unique thing and it reps both bands at once. So if someone's wearing it out in public and someone's like, hey, is that that one band? Yeah, it is. It's also this other band. It can lead to a cool conversation that helps spread word of mouth, what you are all about. I mean, anything a t-shirt does. Number nine, collaboration, EPs and albums. Now this is honestly separate from an, uh, the featuring that I was talking about earlier. It's not both of you guys appearing on one song. It's both of you building an EP or an album together with various artists. I have a buddy of mine, Colin, if you're listening. Hey, Colin. He's an artist named Ship and Sail, and he put together a really cool EP or album that was a bunch of Connor Oberst covers by, I think it was 11 different local bands. So they all recorded their covers of the song and submitted them to him. And then I was lucky enough to one, record and mix his song, but also I mastered the whole um, album. And when it all came together, it was so cool because you had all these different tonal stylings around one artist, which is Connor Oberst that they're all doing covers of. And once again, it got people listening to multiple different artists in the scene and getting excited about other artists in the scene that they maybe would not have been introduced to if it weren't for that project. It takes a lot of upfront time and investment, but also, as I said, not only are they listening to it because they like other those other artists, if you're covering a more known artist, now this comes into uh, cover licensing and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, not going into the weeds of it, if it's someone that other people are going to look up into, they might stumble across it searching for the original artist, and they might really like all of these covers or the different takes on it and become fans of you or somebody else in the scene based upon a project like that. So once again, it's big, takes a lot of time, 
but also allows you to kind of pull together money to promote it because it's 10 people putting a little bit of money in to promote it in multiple different locations to help this thing grow. And it can be a really cool and fun project once it all comes together and a really cool listening experience for fans. 10 is fan engagement and asking fans for their input can be a little complicated if you're trying to collaborate with other artists through it. There's some creative ways of coming about it that I can think of. Like you can give the other band your social media account for a week and have them engage with your fan base and how they interact with your fan base inspires them to release something or create something that they then post on their channels and can direct reference to you and you can release something in direct reference to them and their fan base. Um, obviously for this one, you'd really have to trust the band that you're giving this information to, um, or not even letting them log in, but having them message you, Hey, post this or post that. And then you have to manually put it in and post it yourself, but it's their words and their interaction. Uh, just kind of some fun things that you can do to make the fan engagement more of an interesting process. Thank you for tuning in this episode. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long. I know with these soul episodes, it can kind of come off that way. I was really going guns a blazing right off the bat. So I appreciate you listening to me going quick. With that said, that's all 10. We are done. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen as I go over these today. Let me know which ideas you liked, which ones that maybe you've done before. And if any of these twists on these formulas or these collaboration ideas sound interesting to you, also let me know if there's another one that you've thought of that I don't even have on this list because maybe it'd be worth redoing this list later on and having some specific ample, specific examples of all of these things from you guys. Kind of how I listed out my friend Colin and Brian about the podcast and the collaboration album that they did. If you've done something similar, let us know so that we can kind of make reference to that. Let's collaborate ourselves as well. You know what? That's what this whole thing's about. But anyways, with that being said, thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about the podcast or communicate with us directly, you can email us at podcast at musicmakerscookbook.com or you can follow us on any social media that we have out there and message us. We have a YouTube account. We don't have Twitter, but we do have TikTok and Instagram and technically a Facebook, but we don't really engage with that too often. But you can always check us out there if you want some short content or some other kind of content out there. Also, if you want to contact me specifically, you can go to swsrecordings.com. I do remote mixing and mastering for folk, rock, and acoustic, and sometimes blues. So if those are some genres that you create music in and you listen to my examples and would like to work with me, I would absolutely love to work out with you. I have a form that you can fill out on the website. Also, if you want some independent artist Business coaching, I do one-on-one coaching, which is basically this podcast, but more specific towards you, your music, and your goals in the industry so we can help you succeed and make a living in this industry faster. So once again, reach out if that's something you're interested in. Aside from me, my co-host Brandon, who once again, unfortunately isn't here, if you want to look out and find some information on him, studio222recordings.com, check out his website. It's a beautiful website. Man, this guy is on top of all visual aspects. He's good at lighting, graphic design, website design, and also really, really good at music. Specializes in hip hop, rap, that kind of stuff, but he does a little bit of everything, honestly. He's turned out some awesome metal songs, some awesome folk and country things, but uh, definitely hit him up if that's also someone you're interested in working with, studio222recordings. With that being said, thank you for joining us in our kitchen today. Next week, I'm so looking forward to having Brandon again because, man, I love that guy. And it helps make this conversation go a lot smoother. So with that being said, until next time, sorry, Brandon, I got to say it. Bon appetit.